Hello friends, myself Vaibhav and I have been working since last years in software industry. I am ISTQB certified and I have been working on automation with QTP, Selenium and APM that is for mobile automation. I have already prepared a course for Selenium with Java. I am preparing this small course for test ng because when we are automating using the Selenium we should know test ng very well because test ng is the one who is handling a selenium test maintaining a test what test to execute what test case to skip how to generate the logs what test will be executed so all these activities are handled by test ng so we need to know in detail what this test ng is so let's go through a short description or an index what we'll be covering. We'll be covering what is test ng and how to install it. There are various features of test ng like annotations, prioritizations. You have 100 test cases, then which test case needs to be executed before. Out of those, 100 test cases if some test case depends upon some another test cases suppose I want these two test cases should be executed together might there can be data providers that is if my test needs some inputs or input data then how I can handle those data providers so suppose I have test suit then how I can maintain my test suits can I have a large uh, more than 5 to 10 test suits if it easy to uh, uh, handle so all these features are handled by test ng another features that how to skip a test how to fail a test what are assertions if I executing test then how to generate the reports using test ng Then what is build.xml? Is it easy to maintain a thousand test cases with test ng? We need build.xml. It helps us. How to execute test ng uh, with various its features like uh, uh, how to dump develop the fancy reports how to develop the graphs so that I can present it to my manager team and we will be studying that how we can install or configure ant why ant is needed how we can integrate ant with a test ng how ant can, ant can help us to develop the fancy reports also uh, uh, we know that if we are executing a test uh, selenium test we need to open our eclipse and we need to right click on build.xml or we have to follow a number of process a number of steps but can i have some exe file so that i can double double click on it and my test execute yes you can do this with the help of ant and test ng we'll be studying this how to generate the logs so these are the few features we'll be covering in this course apart from these i will be also covering some framework features as well so thank you let's start with the course hello friends i will be adding this short video regarding how you can install the test ng uh, in your eclipse project okay uh, First of all, uh, we want to know that when we are learning Selenium Web Driver, that is the automation tool for web testing, why do we need the test ng and what is a test ng? Okay, so I will use paint, open the paint. Okay, now suppose if I say that you have. test case okay 
so if you are working in a very very small project and use uh, let's say you have uh, say four test cases it's a very short project you have a four test cases okay you know what in the projects are okay you have uh, in a test case what are the requirements in a test case the requirements are you have the test input you have a logic okay you have the code in which that logic uh, works in that code using your test data and it gives the ex output that is the actual output and you compare your ex actual output with your expected output and you give the results is whether is pass or fail okay so you have all these four test cases and these are performing the same thing uh, what we say that they are working under the same scenario of uh, a test case okay now if I say that uh, uh, that uh, two test cases are of one functionality and other two are of uh, for the another functionality now if I say that uh, uh, perform the test cases which are reference to the functionality of one so you know that these two test cases are for the first functionality so you just right click and execute those test cases run as java application if I say run this one test case is for this functionality you run it so it is all going proper so when you are start now learning selenium you say that uh, why the need of selenium is I, you s give me a test to execute and I'm running there is no uh, need for test ng okay now I will tell you what is why we need the test ng okay when your project increases or say the number of test count increases when you are working okay so there are few challenges you need that is managing tests okay so in your project as the project increases the count of the test increases it reaches from 10 then going from 100 to 1000 and few thousands okay so normally it, it's normal that to have thousands uh, automation test cases for a project it's, it's normal okay then how you can manage your test cases managing means that out of that's those thousand test cases if I say that execute those test cases for a this, this functionality then how you can manage it if I say that execute uh, from t 10 uh, or say up from 100 test cases this test case should be executed first then these then how will you manage it if I say that oh, take me an, an n number of uh, different ways you want your test cases to be done as according your project needs okay the another can be your test input okay test input that for running of a test case you need the test data okay or I will write here test data test data can be your SQL your uh, uh, Excel or Oracle whatever databases so you have to maintain your data and you have to communicate with the database okay you need to generate reports okay when you're working with that automation testing it is not uh, the main you have executed your test and they are going supposedly whole day they have been executing okay at the end of the day if you are not able to tell your manager or your client that out of these thousand cases these 900 are passed 100 are fair whatever the scenario is if you are not able to g show this report to your reporting um, uh, uh, authority they actually the higher management only don't they are not technical they need the reports okay you won't be calculating that time that I calculate thousand test cases and you will be counting one two three four these four are passed next five six are fail you won't be calculating okay so test ng helps you here as well okay for the logs 
okay what you mean by logs logs are that uh, if you have run uh, uh, your automation scripts that is of 10 hours okay so what it each and every time what is going you can maintain logs for that okay so you can uh, because uh, it not always that uh, exception knowing the exception uh, you are able to identify error you have to check the logs that what was going at this time and where the error was okay so logging and there are different uh, there are different features as well in which you need via the test there are number of things as soon as you when you'll be learning test ng you will know okay so for this region you need if i go by diagram i can say that this is your test ng okay and okay this is your excel this is your suppose i sql okay you need to generate reports okay you need to generate logs you need to generate results okay you have here tests okay then you have tests here okay and you want to communicate with you want to have the excel reader okay you want to get the data from the sql you want to get uh, give this to your tests okay you have to move to and fro from your test okay you want to generate the reports sorry you want to generate the reports you want to generate the logs you want to generate the results okay you then what that does test ng resolves your this issue okay he works at the central authority and it manages all your test it uh, and there can be another uh, boxes as well okay there can be another boxes okay different boxes in which you are getting input and output so test ng what does it helps you to manage your test cases okay it's a framework which helps you manage your test cases there are different frameworks present one is your uh, if i say one is your j unit okay uh, before uh, you must have also heard that developers use j unit okay it's also a testing framework but we will be learning with the test ng because test ng is uh, uh, yeah, is in demand as if we uh, if we go particular with the selenium uh, test ng is able to generate reports which are more user friendly okay they are very good reports so we'll be learning with the test ng okay so this is the test ng if anyone asks test ng is a framework it m helps to manage your uh, uh, it helps you manage your uh, automation suite you can say this manage your test because the um, tests want to communicate with each other there are various things you want to do to test priority grouping listeners okay except the test you have various functions you want to get the data you want to generate the reports you want to generate the law and number of features so test ng resolves all these of your features and it's a it's the api it's a jar okay so now uh, you, how you can include your test ng in your eclipse okay there are two methods first method is go to eclipse okay this is from previous project okay go to eclipse click on help and go to eclipse marketplace 
in the marketplace yeah ju it's just refreshing wait for it okay in the find you just type test ng and click on enter as soon as you click on enter it will check the eclipse marketplace for the test ng plugins which are available okay so i have already installed so it is not giving me an install operation like this it is only giving me an install operation and an update if it, it is already updated so it is also grayed out so i am only getting the pro, uh, option of install so in in the in your system you will be getting an option like this install you just install it click on error and it will be installed another method to install the test ng is that go to the website that first go to the navigate to google.com in the search box type install test ng click on first link okay and it will give you this here that for eclipse 3.4 if you are seeing this video and definitely you are working in 3.4 3.4 are the sorry guys 3.5 is the latest uh, eclipse uh, uh, you must be uh, working on the latest only in uh, it's uh, 3.3 is a pretty old version so i don't think you must be having so just check your eclipse version as well but you just work on this 3.4 your your eclipse is this so copy this url okay go to your eclipse click on help before we have gone to eclipse marketplace the another method is you can also click on install new software type the address we have copied okay and click on enter when you click on enter this will show test ng click on this expand this in my system it is already installed so it is saying all items are installed your so you can choose the either way by the previous method i have told you or this okay so it's saying already installed in your system it is it must ask for the install and you click on the install here and just install it now after installing if you want to verify if test ng is installed in your system or not again there are two there are many methods i will be showing you two, uh, two methods which we mainly use one is go to the preferences go to windows go to preferences and you will see a test ng here it means that it is configured to your eclipse another it is go to file click on new project and uh, open a java project sorry and uh, click on other <coughs> sorry under this you will find a test ng here you can make a test ng project as well okay if you check this that uh, it means that test ng is already installed on in system okay so guys in this video i have shown you that what is the need of the test ng is and how we can configure or install test ng to your eclipse next test ng please watch, uh, watch my next sessions that uh, uh, in which i will be working with the test ng that uh, uh, various test ng expert like uh, how we can priority test cases how we can group test cases how we can use listeners etc every stuff which is related to test ng i will be covering it here okay also you can uh, subscribe to my channel so you just get updated about my uh, new uh, videos or you can just also like and subscribe like uh, subscribe my videos okay thank you guys hello friends i'm making this module to show you that uh, what are annotations in test ng in the previous module of test ng i have shown that what is test ng and how we can install or configure our test ng to a ide eclipse for java okay after the installation of test ng is that how we can use the test ng in simple term i can say that we can use test ng using the annotations in uh, in the plain term what the annotations are they are generally the explanation or to a diagram or something so with test ng we works with annotations okay to understand better the different annotations let uh, do it practically i will create first a java project okay 
we'll name it as selenium project confinish under this I will make a package learning test ng okay under this I will make my class and I will name as test ng annotation 1 that is the one class you have been studying before that uh, to or the basic program of hello world we used to write here public static void main okay when running with test ng we don't need to bother about uh, the public static void main because generally the execution of uh, program starts from void main class or function but when we are using test ng the test ng api makes uh, it has the public static void main and it calls it and it launches the program okay now with test ng uh, is basically a test framework okay whatever we need to test in test ng should be under this annotation that is at the rate test okay if I make a function here uh, public void my I will name it as test one that is my first test okay this is the, my function and I will write here system dot out dot ln inside test one okay if I write at, at the rate test annotation above this function then it will be considered by test ng that it is your a test case okay it's giving me error because I need to import my add my test ng library to my project okay so I will add my test ng library as soon as I click you will find your test ng library is attached to your project after this you need to import the library for this test ng that is test ng dot annotations okay save this program for running the test ng you can do it two ways uh, you can you have multiple ways but I, for in the initial level I will just show you the two ways first is right click on your program uh, let me first increase my font size so it will be more clear to you okay I will make it 16 yeah it's, it's good okay so the first method for running test ng is that click on uh, run as test ng test you will get this test ng test click on it okay and in the console you will see it is giving me as inside test one I am printing this one inside my first test inside test one so it is printed and it has given me a report that it is passed test one is the name of my first test and it is saying it is passed if you go to this here results of test ng you will also see a report which is in green because it is passed okay so this is the first main advantage that you get the reports generated automatically running with the test ng so green is mean that the test case has passed the second method is go to your package project and run as test ng test so it will run all the tests which are present under this so you will getting the same report here Oops, sorry okay you will be getting this Oops, oh, oh, I have switched them sorry guys okay okay so you are getting the same report that is inside test one and one test case is pass okay so let's suppose that I want to add another test case and that test case is, is this function public void test 2 uh, I'm just giving here system dot print all on maybe you must be having some code and logics under of the for the test 
but to my main motive here is to show the annotations what they are and how they work okay and here it will be inside test 2 to make uh, it be uh, if I run this okay let's suppose if I run this and if I check the report it is giving me only test inside test 1 if I go to the report as well okay it's not run it let's me run again yeah so if I again if I run again the reports are generated now so you will see that you will get only you have executed only test one only this test has been run not this one because test ng only recognize or it works with annotations we have not mentioned at the rate test before this so test ng won't recognize now if I mentioned at the rate test and if I again execute run this as test ng in the reports in my console you will see see yes inside test 1 and inside test 2 and both the test cases are part go to the report and uh -huh, why, why, why it's, maybe there's some issue uh, it won't ha it normally don't happen <laughs> okay so it's giving me the report for both the test which are green okay so if you are writing multiple test cases you need to include these annotations now there are different type of annotations we want to learn in the first level now what these annotations are first is at the rate test okay now the next annotation I will be talking about is at the rate before method and at the rate after method now what these annotations are if I write here annotation that is at the rate before method I will include this annotation to my lab to my project okay this before method consists all the prerequisites okay for example for running this test one you need to initialize some variables okay or anything you want to enter something or you want that before this the login should be there any test case which have prerequisites you can mention under this before method so that your test is only uh, concentrating upon the logic for the test it's not working on the prerequisites so, okay so make a function here public void these name can be anything for uh, clarity I'm just naming it the uh, same as the annotations it can be anything before method and uh, I will write here I am or suppose uh, before every test I want to open my uh, browser opening browser okay I save this and if I again run this as test ng test just what's going on guys just just hold actually I'm not using mouse so it's I'm not comfortable with my key keypad here yeah if I run this so this is my report generated you check in the console that first it has opened the browser first it has opened the before method then it is giving me inside test one okay it again opens the browser that it, it again op go to before method and it open the and it then printed inside test 2 then that's 2 okay so what we mean by here at the rate before method is that at the rate before method 
will apply to all the tests which are present in that class okay so if you write any uh, other method also so it before running that test before method will be called so it is a type of uh, initialization or prerequisites because for before running every test you want to open your fresh browser so before every test this method will be called similarly before method we have one method which is or one annotation that is after method as the names suggest it will be just opposite of the before method this after method will be called after an each test okay let me write here public void uh, after method okay and in this suppose I want to close my browser after every test I want to close my browser so that in the next test I again open the browser and close it okay and perform my test execution I will write closing browser I will include my libraries after method and again if I run this as a test ng test so you see here the report here generated is opening browser then it's going under the, my test then it's closing browser that is after test after execution of this it again opening the browser that is before method is called then test then after method okay so these uh, after and before method are after method and before method are called before and after each test okay so if we write here that is before method and f before every test before method is called and then after method now there is another annotation which is known as at the rate before class okay now what this before class annotation is as the name suggests this before method is called before any method so this method before class or annotation will be called before any that class as we know Java is stored in dot class files okay so when we will be executing this Java it will be stored as test ng annotation hyphen one dot class okay so this method will be called after loading this class that is only one time for one class file this method will be called only one time okay if I write here public void before class and, and suppose when I am inst working with one jar Java file I want to initialize my selenium driver initialize uh, selenium okay I will include my test ng library okay if I save this and run this as uh, test ng let's see the result okay. the result here is yes initialize selenium during the course of exe uh, execution initialize selenium is called only once okay because we have executed one class file and it will be called only one time okay similarly like before class we have an annotation that is at the rate after class so it is just opposite to it it will be called only one time after before class and all the test and be, uh, after and before methods have been called so it will be called after that okay so I will write here, make a function public void after class 
and in this I want to destroy my selenium destroy selenium save this include my library okay and if I, I will run from here if I run this as a test ng see the reports here this is the initialized selenium okay this is the initialized selenium in a before class then it's open browser that is for the method and then test then method and this is the destroy selenium so th it is called after the end of this class is taking place that is destroy selenium only once okay so we have here yeah so this is my before class and then test then method and this is the destroy selenium so th it is called after the end of this class is taking place that is destroy selenium only once okay so we have here yeah so this is my before class okay and before annotation after class okay now we have another uh, like suppose this is was one my one file if I have another Java file okay I will name it as test ng right annotation okay and under this I again make one test okay I will write the annotation test okay first I need to add the function public void test 3 and I will print here inside test 3 I will include my test ng library ok if I only run this file ok and you see the reports only this test has been executed which is only present in this java file okay if i go to my package and if i right click and run this as test ng test and i if i check my yeah or i will go through the reports it would be easy if i go to the reports you see that here it had executed all the tests all the functions which have the annotation at the rate test before any function so it execute the all the three tests which are present under this package okay so what uh, when we run anything through test ng so it execute all the functions which are starting with annotation at the rate test okay now there is one annotation that is at the rate before test okay now what this function uh, annotation is this annotation is called before any at the rate test okay it is not uh, specific to any class okay suppose you have five classes and in any of the classes you have mentioned this before test then this will be the first annotation which will be called let me write this and you will get an idea I will write public void before test sorry, before test and under this suppose I want to start my execution 
start test execution okay save this I will include my libraries save this and I will run my whole package as test ng test if you see at the why it's not a Okay. Yeah. If there is some problem, let us check the console. It won't happen. I think it's some eclipse uh, is giving a problem. Okay. So if I go run this as test ng test. Yeah. This, this is fine now. Yeah. So you see here start test execution this is the first annotation which is called under this it has called the test then initialize selenium okay then it is moved to this class and it is started working with before class of this okay if I write here uh, suppose before this if I write here annotation before class and I will write public void before class and in my first file in the before class I was mentioning initialize selenium for class 1 and here destroy selenium for class 1 okay I will copy this and include in my second class file that is initialize selenium for class 2 and destroy selenium for class 2 I'll save this and if I run my package as test ng test then you check the reports now it's an interesting report you see these are my test okay before test the test method is called okay before every class this was my first class and this was my second class okay the before class and after class are called okay this initialize selenium for class 2 I think I misspelled it so that's why it's giving okay and this is for my first class initialize selenium for class 1 and destroy selenium for class 1 but start test execution is called only once so before test is executed before any test is executed okay so you are getting the hierarchy here okay so here if we say that before class it is before test and at the end we have at the rate after test so we're getting the hierarchy now let's suppose there is uh, one more annotation that is yeah one more thing like before test we have after test also which is called after all tests have been executed works the same way so just I won't show you because it's the same thing only that is after test and stop test execution okay include the library now there is one more annotation that is at the rate before suit before suit is the topmost or the root annotation 
uh, which is called as soon as your suit is starting the suit starts okay so this is the the basic or the starting uh, annotation right public void before suit you can name these functions anything I'm just giving for the sake so that you can easily identify them I will write system dot out and I have in the before so write that starting or test execution or starting test ng okay before the suit is called and like before suit we have also an after suit okay which is called when we are ending our suit okay after our test suit and I'm saying is stopping test ng save this import my libraries so let's execute uh, all of this and yeah so check the result you see starting test ng is the starting one and you uh, after this the before uh, yeah first is the before suit and then comes the before test okay and uh, here this is your before test this first line is your before test and this is your after test this is your before suit and after suit is printed after the suit work has been completed the test ng work has been done then it is giving me after suit Okay, so if we check the hierarchy at the rate before suit is the most starting one then we have before test then we have before class for each class then we have before method which is called for every test then we have after method then after class which is respect to ev uh, for each class after test which is called before any test is called okay and we have before suit which is oh sorry after suit which is called after the suit has been executed okay so this is the hierarchy okay you can download the code from uh, the uh, comment below okay in the comments we'll find the link so this is how you work with and these are the following types of annotations which are present so these annotations are really helpful because if these annotations are not there suppose you want to initialize your selenium web driver okay so there is no point of initializing the driver again and again suppose you have 100 test cases in each of these you don't need to initialize again and again just call this your uh, uh, before test before this is ex called only once uh, this is your before test yeah this is called only once before any test case is started so it will initialize your selenium web driver okay so these annotations are very helpful when you are making a framework because it saves a lot of your time okay and it also looks good that you are not initializing web driver again and opening again and again the lines of coding is also re reduced and hence your time is also reduced okay now I wanna talk you about test ng XML okay if I suppose run this uh, as test ng and uh, go to my console you will see a one good thing here that before starting test ng this XML is prepared okay so when we are running a test through test ng test ng identifies only identifies an XML that is test ng XML 
and it reads the test in the XML and execute our test but you will say that we have not created any test ng XML then how our test was executing this is because what we are executing here what the test ng does it identifies all the tests below it and it creates a default test ng XML for us and then it's executing from it let's go and see what this test XML has okay and uh, yes Cop and copy this put under your project okay if I open this in Eclipse okay and uh, what happened guys oh, I'm facing a lot of issues if actually I don't have mouse it's yeah yeah this is my test ng XML so it has defaultly created this XML and then it's running from this XML in this XML you can see that it has named my suit as a default suit you will you can also check this hierarchy is the same as here somewhat like this we have a suit under suit we have test under test we have classes and under classes we have both are classes okay is the same hierarchy okay so it it prepares this default XML it consists and it executes all the at the rate test which are present under these class so I can also right click on this and run this as a test ng suit so you will get the same result here which for executing this but this XML is very good because we can customize suppose in future I want don't want to execute this there are about, there are many class files and I don't want to include those I can just delete it and run this so you can customize your testing with the help of this test ng XML hello friends in the previous session we have been learning that uh, the various annotations which are present with test ng now study that suppose how we maintain the batches that uh, if suppose I want to run uh, 5 test cases 50 test cases or I have to maintain 2 batch files how I can do with the help of test ng So let me first create a new Java project name it at learning test ng I will make a new package test ng I will import my selenium libraries go to java build path add external jar files and ok so let me first create new class that is I will name it as login test I will write test cases under it test public void uh, login via email and I will write here I won't be making a program I will just writing the print statements under it that is login via email 
I will import the libraries for I will include my test ng library and I will import the annotations as well similarly I will be making three tests here correct that the indentation that is control and I Control uh, login via Facebook. And login via Twitter. It's giving an error. Oh man, why it's giving an error? It should not be giving errors. Why it is? Okay. Come on, man. Just let me type again. Test public void login via Facebook. Illegal modified for parameter login only final orders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's silly me. I have just forgot to close the inverted commas. That's why it was giving here. Come on, man. <laughs> it happens sometimes. If it has been a logical error, I would have cat it at once. So these type of silly mistakes are really hard to find okay and the second test would be login via facebook and the third test would be login via twitter okay so I will make an another test file and I will write sign up test and I will write test and I will also include three tests here and it will be public Void uh, sign up via email, and I will print the statement that sign up via email. Okay, I will include my test annotations library, and similarly, I will maybe making to another test that is sign up via Facebook account and sign up via Twitter okay So suppose if I want to run this test, how I can do is I can right click on it, 
click on run as test ng test and my test would be executed yeah so my tests are executed this is my report that is login via test these three and this is my report run it again it's sometimes this report is not correct yeah so it gives me all the three tests which are passed login via email login via facebook and login via twitter so suppose there is some another file also test up test ng okay and you want to test sometimes you want to test this as well sometimes you don't want to this into your test suppose there are your three test suits one is for the functional test one is for the regression testing so you want this lo login test and sign up to be present under the functional test but and not under the sorry not another regression test then how you can do this okay so as i have also previously told that test ng execute the test with the help of a file that is build.xml but we have not built any build.xml file then how we are able to execute this is because if we don't build any build.xml test ng itself create a default file for it this is the file let's see where, where what is this in this file okay okay i will copy this file default file i mean paste under my project remember to paste it under the project okay not under the source but under your project let's open this file and see what it details it have it is an xml file it has the name of our test suit which is default test verbos the test name that is default test and the files which i need to test if you again see here it were the same details which were printed i will just show you yes this was running test okay this was the default name of my test that is default test this is the name of my test suit default test suit okay so suppose i want to make my own build.xml a customized build.xml file then how i can make it first of all i want to make this name of my test suit as functional test suit and the test name will be basic tests okay let's execute and see if it's working or not now the name of this file should be test ng.xml okay now before how are we executing we were right clicking and doing run as test ng but here if we want to run the programs through what it will do it will create an default test ng xml for this and will execute it but in our case we want to execute this file so we will go to this xml file right click on it and will click as run as test ng suit okay so it has executed let's study if we check the console you will see that it has printed 
it has executed our customized build.xml it's giving us basic test and a test suit name as functional test suit and all the three tests are present under it okay now let's customize it more now you see that here there is one thing that is verbose to what this verbose is verbose can be given a numeric value from 0 or 1 till 10 suppose if I give here value 0 and I execute my test ng suit you see here the d information present here would be very less if I write here the maximum that is the 10 and if I again run this as test ng suit you see a detailed information is present so verbose tells that how much information or logging you need to want so basically we two is sufficient for us okay now here we specify the classes which we need to include okay so currently we have two classes if I want execute login test so how I should write that is class name my package name dot my class file if I want this sign up class also to be included so I will just copy paste here and that is login test dot sign up test I will save this and run this as test ng suit if I check oh, oh man this is sometimes give problem <laughs> this the reporting in test ng okay yeah so you see this is my test suit name that is functional test suit under this I have given the name basic test and under this two of my test files are executed test ng login test and test ng sign up test and respectively test are also executed okay so this is how you can customize your build.xml So if any suppose and you will save this test ng as your functional test suit so suppose if uh, in future you write some another test file and you want to include in this test suit functional test suit you will just copy this paste here save this here paste it here and suppose the name was test ng or maybe so you can include some different package as well and you write uh, a payment tests or whatever test test files you have built so this is how you can maintain your test suits in test ng okay thank you in the next session we'll be learning that how to maintain different types of test suits okay thank you hello friends in the previous session we have seen that how to prepare the batches file with test ng so that it is easier to uh, to uh, we can collectively execute your test cases now we will be seeing that how we can handle various batches or the different uh, Excel test ng dot xml files so we were having these two tests uh, let me create some more test files okay I will create a new test file for payment test
write new test public void payment in dollar I will print here payment just a dummy test in dollar include my test ng library then include make another test that it payment in rupee and uh, I will make an another test that is payment return I will add a test here and a function public void and will name this test as uh, payment returned by bank and a dummy test case that will print payment return by bank okay and I will include my test library so now I have four test files okay and now I will be preparing the test in GXML. Suppose this was my uh, functional test suite for ba basic. This is my basic functional test suite. Okay, the login and the sign up test are the part of my functional test suite, but of part of basic functional test suite okay and I will name this my XML as suit basic functionality or I will write basic functionality suit Then I will also make an another test suit, okay, and I will name as payment functionality suit, okay, and under this my test name will be payment test. The classes which I include are payment test and payment returns that is payment test and payment turn and I will save this okay so if I want to execute the basic functionality test so I will just run this and execute test ng test suit okay and uh -oh. Sorry guys. Yeah, it is a right. It was right. Sorry. Sorry. My mistake. Yeah. So it has included two tests under the basic functionality that is for test ng login and test ng sign up. Okay. If I want to execute the payment functionality test suit, I will right click run as test ng test. Just a second, it not has executed the payment mm, return return by bank. Let me check the name was correct. Payment return. Okay, let me execute again.
yeah so it has now it has executed the basic functionality test suit and under this payment test and under this the payment test and the payment return test okay I will under also change the name of this test suit at payment functional test suit. so I have these two test suit so for testing basic functionality I will use this test suit and for testing the payment functionality I will use this test suit but if I wanted to execute all the functionality test suit then how I can do it I have to individually select one by one these test suits and right click and run this as test ng but as we know that what is automation is all about that automation is that during the uh, at a night hours you have just put your execution and you check the report in the morning but in this case it won't be possible because you have to individually execute one by one so for helping in this we will make a one more file that is we can say a master test suit file we can name this as test ng dot xml okay the suit name will be functional test suit okay and the test name will be I will just writing test and under the suit name I won't be writing the test under the suit name I have to mention these suits okay so for this yeah this is there okay. I have to use this suit files Yeah, and under this I will write my correct annotation. Yeah, so under the suit files I will mention all the suits I want to execute. Okay, so my first suit name is basic functionality test suit. Okay, I will copy this and paste it here. My another test suit is payment functionality test suit and I will paste it here and I will save this now if I run this test suit it will call respective test suits and execute these both test cases or test suits okay let us check run this as test run as test ng test suit and yes you see here total nine tests are executed let's see the detailed report first was the, the payment functionality all the test cases of the payment are executed as well as of the email functionality so total there were nine test cases so all tests are executed okay this was your first test suit payment functional test suit and this is your another test suit that is basic test suit this test suit and this test suit total is equals to three tests was well, six test plus three tests is equals to total nine tests so all the nine tests have been executed so this is how you can execute your multiple test suits test suits files you can prepare a small small test suit files as per your needs and you can also make the master test suit files so suppose in your next in your project uh, in your execution you don't need this test suit file just remove it and paste some another suit file you want to use okay thank you hello friends in this session we'll be learning that how we can uh, pass test fail test and skip test okay so this is my java file and it has three tests one is login via email the second one is login via Facebook and the third one is login via Twitter I have won this I just delete this these are my XML for the previous yeah
okay i will delete this yeah this is my build.xml okay uh, let's check this yeah this is i have named this suit as my suit and test as my test and the file name is the my package name and login test yeah if i run this test as ng.xml okay and i see the reports oops it's the problem with ng yeah yeah <laughs> now only two is generated it happens <laughs> let me just run it once more time yeah this time it's fine so the report consists of three tests that this is my suit under this suit this is my test and under this this is my test file which consists of three tests login via email facebook and twitter these are all are green this shows that these test cases are passed but when my test case are fail or oh, and if i want to skip the, by test how i can do with the help of test ng okay so just minimize this so suppose if i want to skip this test okay suppose this my test i am using this file okay this file my consist of 100 of tests so during uh, suppose a test run uh some functionality is not implemented so you don't want this test for example login via facebook should be executed then how you can handle because if suppose this file was having thousand of test and when you run this test definitely if this is not implemented it will fail then you will check the scripts and then you will identify yes this test was not to be run because it the functionality is not supported so your time we your lot of time is wasted for running the execution and then analyzing it so test ng supports a feature in which you can skip this test that you can write something in this so that this test won't be executed okay you can write here throw new skip yeah this skip exception and you can write your message that facebook functionality is not supported semicolon and i will save this okay if i now run this as run this as test ng test suit and if i check go through the reports you see login via email has passed login via twitter has passed but the login via facebook is shown in yellow so it means that i am skipping this test okay this my test is not executed okay you see here in login via facebook it is giving me a skip exception if i check the logs this is like the facebook functionality is not implemented okay so you can use this skipped uh this skip function in any test you want to execute suppose twitter is also not implemented so i can also write twitter functionality is not supported if i again run this run this as test ng suit and i go through the reports hey man this test ng maybe i need to configure again actually test ng don't give so much error it's given in mine case maybe it's not properly configured that's the reason because it's not it this much unstable that the reports are not getting generated okay so you see now the two tests have been skipped login via facebook and twitter and login via email is passed okay now i just comment this comment this skip now suppose i have i want to uh, make my test case fail or i need to for example if i say 
log in via email if i say i want a condition that if the name is webhub then only my test case should pass okay then how i can do it okay for this that is for checking or for conditions checking in a test case we have a search okay a search is a class file is a library by which we can use the conditions in test ng it supports a lot of functions so here assert equals assert equals for example if i go through here if i use assert equals sorry assert equals yeah you see assert equals comparing boolean to boolean assert equals comparing to byte character so if i want to use assert equals string string okay that is thy name is vaibhav okay and my name is vaibhav so this assert will check if this condition will be true then it will be pass if this condition becomes false then my test case will be fail okay let's save this and run this as test ng suit yes in this case login via email has passed because this conditions is come to true now if i write here web of one okay then both the strings are not equal now run this and see if it's still passing or get failed run this as again and you see here the report says login via email is in red that is it is failed because our assert has checked that is it equals that both of these are equal or not if they are not equal then it it is failed hence it is showing us failed so you have various functions here you have assert dot assert actually we have for every data type they have a function as it equals they have it's it's known as polymorphism equals okay and i use for suppose i want to compare the integers i write 1 comma 2 okay it will check is these two are equal or not now run this it is failed again see three test are executed and one is failed you see actually my test ng is working fine it has executed three test out of one is fail only the report is giving some error it's some configuration problem i will just reinstall later on and it will be fine okay now assert has different some other functions we have assert dot assert true yeah that, uh, sorry assert true yeah assert true will only work when the condition is true if this condition will be true then it will be passed if this condition comes to false then the test case will fail for example if i write a condition that 4 is greater than 1 it's a condition okay and it is true condition so it will check is it true is it true then the test case would passed let's see run this as test ng suit and yes it has passed okay now let me work the other way that is one is sorry is 1 is greater than 4 no it is not so my test case should fail okay and yes it has failed okay similarly we have assert dot assert false it works 
vice versa of condition for true that if this is false then my test case will pass if this comes true then it will fail because here we have assert false see if i write here one is greater one is greater than four yes it's false it's not greater and it's checking is it false that the condition becomes true because i am expecting false only let me save this and execute yes the test case passed and if i write a true condition 4 is greater than 1 it is is true but what i am expecting is a false condition is that fail okay now after this uh, what uh, let me show you that suppose i have this condition assert equals webhub dot webhub this will fail because both of string are not not uh, uh, equal if i have something right system dot print all down after assert condition okay and let me just run it and see what's the output is it has failed yes but if you check the results or the logs we have seen login via facebook has printed then the assert but after assert is not printed that is if a test case fail here the control then goes to the next test okay it stop executing after the failure but there can be some conditions in which we want it to be executed this statement so we write this assert in try catch okay if i write try catch probability and uh, nt okay now i will correct that intuition so let's see what the output is in this case i have used the assert in try catch you see in this case it is green and also my assert after assert condition this is also printed now what is happened in the try catch is that whenever the error is comes we are not throwing that error instead we are catching this error is not handled by this test now we are handling that error okay so the exception is thrown or handled by us so it's executed this line also and so it has also uh you see it has also shown in green it's not showing red as well you see the reports it's green but it should have failed what we were expecting was that the continuation should go that i want to execute this line also but my test case should be fail now it is shown by green so how i can handle this uh, we'll be studying this later because we uh, when we will be learning listeners then after this i will be explaining that how it can be read here also uh, in this case scenario okay so in this session we have learned that how we can pass fail using the asserts and we can skip our test cases using test ng okay thank you hello friends 
in this session we will be learning more about some test ng uh, functions actually during the maintaining of the test we found two common scenarios which are problems like suppose if i have thousands of test cases or i say suppose a uh, hundred of test cases now which of these test cases should be executed before and which of the test cases should be after uh, should be executed after that there is no such method we have learned till now which can help us the another scenario is that suppose one test case is dependent on some another test case test case 2 is dependent on test case 1 so if test case fails there is no use of executing of test case 2 so how we can handle this scenario so in this session we will be learning uh, both of these let me prepare a new class file okay and I will name as learning test ng priority okay okay let's click on finish let me create here three test public void login system dot dot out dot print ln login okay and I will include my test ng annotations okay and similarly okay I will make two more tests one it is of log out log out and other is navigating okay cool now I will run this as a test ng now let's see the order the order is login yeah it's the sequence let's say pause I just just a wait seconds you will know what I'm doing okay first I want to log in then navigate then log out okay just a second yeah so here you see I have given the traversing or the like that first my login should take place then my test for navigating should take place and then the test case for logout should take place but actually how it happened the first the login was there then the logout and then the navigator but I want my test case to be in this order so what the test ng has done it has provided a function which will help us we can write here priority we can set the priority of a test case I can give the priority of this test case as one okay it's priority I think it's small p yeah okay and similarly I can say the priority of navigating is 2 similarly priority of this test case is 3 now save this and execute check the order now first the login execute that is priority 1 then the navigation priority 2 and then the logout that is priority 3 okay so it travels as per the priority I have given it suppose if I give priority to this as 4 so the order will be 2 3 and 4 it should be executed at the last now the login test okay let's see if it's working or not run this as test ng test and yes you see out of this the first highest priority is 2 that is navigation so it is executed first then it's the logout and then it's the login 
so if we have a lot of test cases and we need to give priority that which test case should be executed first so we can give the priority like this okay but suppose if you have given two tests the same priority let's say I have given priority to these both test as two okay and if I now run this so it has print logout first then navigation so we have given the priority same priority to both of these test cases so now which one will be executed first depends upon test ng we don't have any control over it maybe it's it taking the alphabetical orders or whatever it is okay but it totally depends upon the test ng we cannot always predict that it will be log out that test will be executed first okay now suppose let me change okay and uh, now I comment this okay now also the multi-line comments there's a one shortcut for adding multi-line comments that is shift control and backslash okay select the area and put it then you can have multi comment through your keyboard now let me again write these test okay and I remove the priority okay suppose after logging I am doing navigation and after that I am doing log, log out now if my login is failed then I cannot perform these scenarios that is navigation and logout so if my first test case is failed there is no use of running these tests because it will be unnecessary a waste of time for executing these test cases because I know in advance that these test cases would fail so we can uh, or we can handle this with a keyword that is depends sorry depends no first the login should be there and I say that the navigation is and uh, in the test depends upon test uh, it's I think depends on method it's on method okay no let's it depends on methods okay and what I can do the braces and the function name okay that is login so this my test case will be executed if my login is successful also I will copy this and I will paste it here if my first test case is passed that is login test case is passed so only these of my other test cases will be executed let's see run this as a test ng test yes the first test was executed and so was the second and third test now if I fail this my test case these two test cases will be failing how I can do this I will put an assert here we have done that we can fail the test case with the help of assert I will write assert dot assert equals okay and uh, let's say I'm comparing two string that is string one and the another is string two definitely both are not same one is having one and another is having two so definitely my test case would fail now let's see what happened to my other two test case which depends upon this test case login test okay save this again run this as a test ng test and just a second run it again yeah you see my first test case login test case is failed because this assert is there 
and my another two tests that is the logout and the navigation are skipped so test ng has works as a smart uh, smart guy here he knows there is no use of testing these two tests because it's depend upon login test and it is failed so it's better to skip those tests so a time is not wasted okay so if you check the logs as well just a second yeah when you check the logs as well it's saying the first one is failed because of the assertion error and it's saying the another test are skipped okay so this is how the test ng works also we can add some multiple conditions also let's say suppose uh, this is my first test case this is my second test case and i want that my this third test case should only be executed when both of these are passed okay so my this test case depends upon login as well as my navigation test case navigating it's navigating test case okay now let's run this as test ng again mm. you see my first test case is passed second is being second yeah, sorry for the interruption guys my first test case is fail because of this assert condition my second test case is passed but my third test case is skipped because this will only be executed when when my both of first two test passes so my this test case is skipped that is in yellow okay so this is how we can use the prioritization and depends upon using test ng also we can use both of them that is uh, test ng and depends upon method right if i write priority i can give the priority as one and depends upon method okay and now let's say i execute this so let me execute this okay i am getting the same output because the depends upon have priority over this priority if it's depending upon okay so we can use this in conjunction of priority and depends upon also thank you guys hello friends i am making this video to show that how we can input some data in test cases that is when we are uh, writing the test cases we need to give some input to that test cases we have seen in before session that using the uh, annotations data parameters we can store those information and can input those into our test cases but there is an another way by which we can do the same work as the data providers are doing but it is not recommended to use this way uh but i am just telling you because normally in interviews and when the in data is in input data is are very less we generally use uh, these parameters okay so let's see how we use this let me create a new class and i will name it as learning parameters okay i will make a test file or a test in it that is public void login okay and i will print here system dot out dot print ln inside login it will be printing this and suppose uh, i also need email id to login 
okay I will include my test ng at, at the rate test annotation library okay this is learning parameters this is my test ng XML I will change the file here I will be executing with the help of test ng and it will be learning parameters okay but we have seen that uh, just a difference that da data parameters we can use data parameters without specifying anything in build.xml but if you are using this method we need to modify our build.xml as well okay so in this test first let's execute and see if it the configuration is right run as test ng oh learning parameters okay the name is right just a second guys yeah it's good one test is executed and it's printing inside login yeah so uh, actually the problems the error uh, it just occurred actually uh, I'm also typing and executing uh, at the same time so it's a tendency that how much expert or how much knowledge you have there will be some mistakes you will be making and one more thing I want to share that the problems which have some functionality difference or uh, some error they are easily to identify but if you make some silly mistakes like spelling mistake or something that mistakes are very hard to find okay because we generally don't think that we can make such type of mistakes and we don't even check those okay so it's good if you're making a mistake uh, but you're debugging that is you should able to find the error you mis made okay the best automation engineer or we can say the best coder uh, developer is one who can find the errors who can get the solution of that errors okay for that the best I can suggest is that Google Google is your best answer if you find any error just copy that error and paste on the Google you will have an n number of resources there just search though and I'm sure that you will find a solution there I myself have learned I think 80% from the Google itself it's 10 to 12 20% I can say I have learned from the XP from my professional experience from the seniors but it's more than 80 I can say it's the Google only from which I have learned okay so let's get back so it's working fine okay so I will what I will do I will write a parameter here that is parameter I will name this parameter as mm, email whose value is equal to app automator at the rate gmail.com that is my mail ID okay and I will close this okay. and I will save this so I have in the build.xml I have defined one parameter and now I can use this parameter in my test okay for this I have to write an annotation parameter okay and which parameter I want to include my email parameter So now I can use this in my test for inputting I will write string email and I can print that also system dot out dot print ln and email. So this email 
will get its value from here that is app automata at the read gmail dot com so just again let me go through in the test ng dot xml I can define some variables and give values to it okay now I can include those parameters in my test I can define that I will be using this parameter then I will send it inside it and then I can use it so after using this variable it will print its value let's see if it's working or not yes one test is executed and yes you see here it's printed after inside login it has printed my email ID okay so you can use at the rate parameters annotation also uh, for getting the data but it is recommended to use at the rate data providers on lo only because I think getting only one data and storing that into test NGML this is very really less you will find the scenario here okay but uh, there can be situations like password etc but I uh, we hardly use this at the rate parameters we use only data parameters okay thank you hello friends welcome to the module in this session we will be learning a very important concept in test ng that is data parameters okay now let's uh, understand with an example that uh, what the problem we face during the tests and how we can resolve them using the data parameters okay let's create a new class learning data para para sorry meters okay suppose I create a new test that is at the test public void uh, register user okay and in this test I need to uh, input the first name last name email ID and the password of the user okay so for just reference I'm just printing here because I'm not the writing the real logic how I will be signing and that stuff so let's say customer will be inputting his first name and and his last name and his email and and the password okay let me import my test in G annotations okay so this is my test data so I suppose I want to check this registration for 10 users I want to test with 10 users okay so let me first comment this just first to show you okay now what would be my first data first name data will be Rahul okay and his next last name will be saying email ID will be r at the rate gmail dot com and his password would be suppose say 11 okay so this is my test data so I execute my test with these set of test data okay if it's able to register then my, my test will pass else it will fail now if I want to test with another set of test data then I will copy this test okay and I will write the another user here I will name this test user second okay and I will name here Vibhav okay and saying read my email IDB yeah. So then I will get two tests with two separate test set of test data. Now suppose if I have hundred test type of test data or ten type of test data, then how I could manage? 
should I be writing this at the rate test hundred times and the function again and again? Yes, I can do this, but it's a very tedious task and not recommended. Definitely, no one will like that to copy this page hundred times and just copying, pasting, and making the program unnecessary lengthy. Okay. So, the main type of problem we are facing when we need to execute a test for different types of parameter. Okay. So, to help with this, we or there comes a concept of data parameters. Okay. So, in data parameters, instead of giving the data here, we will be telling that our test will be getting these we want to work with these type of data okay and we have a separate function that is at the rate data providers and all the data we will be putting here okay so we need to write here public and i will tell you just what it is it works in double dimensional array we know we know that what is an object object is the super class okay every int any class uh, object is a super class of it any variable what i mean that if int is there i if I'm, i write the object of it also because every class is extending this object class okay and the name of my data provider is test data okay now how this work is just open let me open the paint how the data provider actually work is uh, as I told you it's a double dimensional array okay in this number sorry in this just a second guys I'm not so good in this paint uh, ah. yeah so in this these rows that is number of rows specifies how many times our test will be executed okay that is number oops yeah number of times test or i can say at the rate test will be executed okay and my number of columns that is this it specifies test data for each at the rate test okay suppose if I have these three rows here it means that my at the rate test or my test will be called three times and the three columns here suggest that for each test I will be putting three test data okay uh, in my this example okay we have four four test data okay that's so let's suppose this okay so our test will be executed three times and it will be inputting four parameters okay so I will declare an array that is an double dimensional array object name this as obj is equals to new object okay and number of times I want to execute is three times and in it is inputting one two three four four columns 
okay and uh, let's give input values object that is 0 0 that is my first at the rate test second object the zero row and my first column object zero row and second column and my object zero row and third column the first is my first name that is Rahul okay sorry this is not object I have this is obj okay okay the next is last name is saying email ID is test at the rate gmail dot com and his password is suppose one two three okay so I have prepared my test data for one test similarly I want to execute three tests okay this is my first test this is my second test second test corresponds to second column that is my column one and my data will be let's say Sorab saying only test one password will be three four. The four the third at the rate test will have test data that is two 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 and the name would be web of say some like the TT it's in just uh, random numbers okay and this my function return a test or an object array double dimensional array that is this object so I will put here return OBJ okay so now here I need to tell that this test is having or getting his data from this data provider okay so I will write that this data will get his data that is data provider from this test data yeah in sorry it was in inverted commas okay also I need to here give the input parameters because I am getting four input parameters for which I need to specify here the first is string first name the second is string last name then string email and then it's string password and instead of these comments I will inputting this first name here then the last name and then the email ID okay so our test data provider which is generating the test data is ready it's saying our test it has test data for three tests and the column states the test data okay and we have told here that this test are depends upon this data provider the name of this function here and the number of arguments it is taking let's see so in this case our test should be executed three times let's check run this as test ng test and you see it's working here it's seeing the total number of test run is three and if you check uh, this test ng configuration of mines giving problem yeah 
so here you see it is executing three times with different type of test data that is Rahul saying this is my email ID and the password is the same which we have given here and similarly the another two tests okay also we can write here we can give suppose we have two types of data or we have various data providers then how we can work we can give name to these data providers also name I can give is uh, data okay so I can also say this depends upon data the name of this data provider okay uh, now run it see it's working yes it is working so suppose if I are having various number of data providers so I can give name to them and I can use them here okay thank you hello friends in the previous session we have seen the use of data providers okay so this is what our test and this was the data provider okay suppose uh, I want to have two files in one file I want to keep all my test cases and in another file I want to keep all my data providers okay so how I can do it is I will create a different class and I will writing at test data file okay under this I will be creating my data provider I will just copy it from here okay and then how I can use it here okay there is a simple concept okay first I will make this data provider as static public static okay so that when I'm using using this in my this program I don't have to create an object for it I will we know you know definitely what the static is I will just use my class name and then my function name I don't need to create an object for it okay so status are basically I can say which can be used without creating its object so I can how I can use here is first I need to mention here data provider class okay what my class is it's my data type file okay dot class and my data provider name is mm, name is data okay the name I have given to it and it will be under brace this commas okay so before we have used the data provider in the same class if I want to have a separate file and it, it will be containing all the data providers then how I can handle this okay so I have some different test also and which may be using the same or the different data providers so in this file I will be maintaining all my data providers and depending upon the data I want to use I will just mention its name so that data provider will be included in my test okay now execute this and check if it's running fine or not okay it's run fine we have three sets of test data and it executed perfectly fine yes we have three rows that is one first test second test and the third test okay now there can be suppose I have a different test case this is my test case one and my this is test case two and this is my login user and login user just name need string email ID and the password okay so for this I need to create a different test data okay so let's see I prepare a different test data and I will name it as login test data okay 
and login data the name of this data provider and I need three but I three rows that is three number of tests but only two columns okay and what are these two columns for login are thus the email ID and the password okay you got this it's pretty simple here so uh, I'm preparing a, a new test and it, its corresponding test data okay so now execute this Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, this the name should be have to be correct. That is the login data. So that's why it was failing because it was not finding because it was wrong. It you know why it was failing? It was that here the columns are four. Okay. But here I have inputted only two columns, so that's why it was failing. So now I've corrected my data provider. Now save this and execute. Okay, it's fine. It has executed my login three times and my register three times. Okay, with the separate test data. Okay, but you see a similarity here that it's just repeating. The test data is repeating. These login test does not have the first name and last name else the everything is separate so what we can have we can use the same data provider in both of the test cases okay so uh, we can mention here actually we can adapt this data provider depending upon our tests okay let me give here method m that it is inputting a method M. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was method. And just let me check. Yeah. So I need to import this file. Okay. So this method states me the test name. Okay. So I can write here if my m dot get get name. If my test name is register user, this name is equals register user, then I need to do this task. Else, if my test name, that is get name, is equals login user okay uh, then I need to do this type of stuff okay so during the login user I need an array of three rows but four columns while in this test I need the column of two users okay so I will just copy from here and I will paste here okay and the same I will copy here okay that's this one So you see here, now here I can use the same data provider in both of these test case. I need, don't need to create different data providers. Okay, this type is very helpful in these type of situations. Okay, and uh, I will return object. So I will create this outside. Okay. I will initialize it here and OBJ. OK. 
okay so it's fine now I can use the same data provider here that is data now let's see it's work fine or not Mm -hmm. It has given me an error. Just execute and verify. Yeah, it's some error. Let me check. Yeah, it's the error is here. Uh -huh. Return object. Mm -hmm. Why it's giving me an error? It should not give me the error initialized okay let's uh, use here separately okay it is <laughs> sorry uh, or I will do I will just initialize it here okay because it's saying it's not initialized okay now let me run this yeah oh my god this test in G issue on my system it is not the problem with testing it's my system guys see it's work perfectly fine different type of test data are called so we can pass the test name in a data providers okay and we have manipulated it so that in both of these test cases we are using the same data provider okay so that's the very important concept data providers and I can say that it it's the main backbone of test ng because this data provider for every test there is some input data okay and depending upon the input data we execute the test so uh, it's good to know uh, the test data providers okay and how we can use them okay thank you hello friends in this session we'll be learning about an another test ng feature that is grouping it's a very important and an interesting feature and after studying this definitely you will be using that in your projects okay now sometimes there is a situation for example you have a test file or you have n number of tests okay so you don't want to execute them every time okay suppose I have some smoke tests smoke test means that uh, test which uh, you are executing a uh, high level test you want to execute just to check your system is working fine or not daily in the morning for example okay so out of 100 test cases you have identified these 10 test cases I want to execute daily okay so what you do you copy those test cases and put them aside let me open the paint so you get a good idea yeah so suppose there are a bunch of hundred tests okay so out of this uh, let's say 20 tests or 10 tests were for smoke okay. so you have put those aside out of these hundred okay uh, 20 tests were for performance okay and remaining it and uh, uh, let's say 70 or 80 were of regression testing Okay. Now you say that, come on, 
out of 100 cases how you can divide these three yes because in regression I have or I can say that these hundreds this thin smoke Uh, sorry guys I'm not so good at paint out of this 10 yeah out of this 10 okay 5 were covered under regression and 5 were covered under performance okay so there were 100 test cases out of these 10 were of a smoke 80 were of regression 20 were performance out of 20 of performance 5 were included in the smoke testing out of 80, 5 were included under the smoke testing. Okay, so what you will do, you will maintain in three sets. When I say execute smoke test, so you execute these tests. When I say performance, you execute these, and I say regression, you execute these. So you have to unnecessarily keep these 10 test cases okay so uh, you can say that I can handle us I can maintain a different uh, test suit or batch file so that I can identify this yes you can make a separate test ng file but or, or sorry test suit file but in that case also you need to copy and paste you have to create a separate Java file here so unnecessary duplicacy of test cases occur so to curb this the grouping comes okay let me tell you or a quote so that you can get a better understanding okay uh, I will write grouping tests okay under this I will make three tests okay okay public void uh, login or I can say feature one system dot print or dot print ln inside feature one I will include my test library file okay and similarly I will have feature 2 test and feature 3 test so these are my three features okay now what I will do I want to make three I want to execute three type of test that is smoke test performance test and regression test so this feature one is included in my performance test so what I can do I can write here groups okay and I can write here smoke sorry performance this is my performance test so I will like performance test okay so I've said that this is under a group of performance tests similarly I say that feature 2 is under the feature of regression test okay and this test 3 should be executed I'm just not taking smoke test now because uh, I don't want to complex it more for three type of tests okay and I want this feature 3 to be executed at both times that is when my performance I want to execute am um, a and yeah when to I am executing my performance test as well as why I am executing my regression test okay so this test will only learn when I am executing performance test 
this test will only run when I am executing regression test and this test will run when I am executing performance as well as regression test. If I am not performing performance then this test won't be executed in any case. Similarly this test won't be executed if I am not executing performance or regression test. Now how to execute these tests? I will open my test ngxml okay, this parameter from the last session okay, just delete it okay, and under test I can include one more parameter that is groups okay under group I will include another parameter that is run okay and under run I need to include sorry include name name of the group I want to execute suppose in this case I want to execute performance tests okay so ha in, in test ng dot xml I execute I am telling it that include only those groups from these tests that is from this group run only test which are of in performance okay so execute from this test cases only execute those group which are having performance as their group that is this is included under performance and this is also included under performance okay let's see I execute it run as test ng dot xml okay it has given me zero it might be some silly mistake I have done it performance I will just check my spelling it's performance and performance okay just execute it once okay let me just pause and just find the error oh I just found a mistake <laughs> I have not corrected it uh, I think the mistake is that uh, I have my class name is here grouping tests okay but in test ng it's learning parameters the, the file from my old that is parameters here I don't have any group so that why it's not executing okay so let's me give the correct test file okay now it should work you see here is a silly mistake <laughs> uh, yeah so it's saying me that two tests executed let's see oh, j just a second yeah two tests executed first is inside feature 1 that is which is having performance feature 1 and feature 3 that is this it has not executed feature 2 because here I have mentioned that execute out of these tests only execute which are in group performance okay if I also want to include tests which are under group of regression then I can insert another include statement that is regression okay now execute yes in this case three tests are executed and all the three that is inside feature 1 feature 2 and feature 3 that is all three are executed now as we have include we also have a feature of exclude as the name suggests this exclude will ex not 
execute the groups which have regression in this case this is a performance this will be executed regression is under exclude okay so it won't be executed this test comes under performance as well as regression this is a and statement here so if it's saying that don't execute then it is having the priority that is test won't be executing okay so our expert our expected result that is only include strictly performance so only this test would be executed that is feature one test okay let's execute to check it out run this as test ng suit yes it has given me one test and it's a feature one test yes that's right okay so this is how you can do the grouping okay it saves uh, a lot of time in copying and pasting though the tests again and again okay thank you in this session we'll be learning about reporting now what is reporting all of you know that in today's world how good you are how much you skills you have it matters but more matter is that how you can represent it suppose you know all a to z of selenium but if you are not able to represent yourself to the intuer then it's not of any value because your selection in automation would be only judge on the basis of your interview you executed 1000 test cases but if you are not able to represent or give the report to correct report to your management your leads clients then it is of no use so effective reporting is very important reporting which is clear and normally the you know if 1000 test cases out of which 500 pass 200 fail 200 are skipped 10 were not executed and others features so if we write di on digits then it is very hard because if actually the persons like client managers don't have so much time so that they read read by read by word by word but on the another hand there is a chart or a pie chart so just viewing that for 2 seconds i just can have the good idea of the current situation of the tests okay so reporting is important and on up top of that effective reporting how effectively we can report is also very important so test ng also do the reporting okay test ng develop reports automatically which can be shared with the team let's see uh, suppose i make uh, java file okay and reporting tests okay under this i will make two test one is of login public void login i will print login under it include test ng annotations library and the another test would be public void log out and i will fail this test using assert condition assert assert equals i will compare two strings that is test and test one definitely these both strings are not same so it will give an error 
I need to import test ng libraries not j unit okay yeah and I save this we copy this class and I will update my test ng dot xml as well this is from the last lecture and yes correct the annotations identification sorry okay sorry I just missed yeah I need to only delete this group not the test correct the annotation and will also update the correct test file so let's execute this run this as test ng suit yeah so one test case is passed and the another test case is failed okay so test ng develops the reports now where these reports are the reports are generated on the test output to show you the test uh, reports are actually generated what I will do I will delete this folder okay I will delete this let me just first refresh my project and then I will delete this okay so it don't have this output folder when I click on test ng suit and if I refresh my folder you see this test output is generated every time when we execute through test ng dot if you expand this you will find this index.html it is an HTML file which will contain our reports let open this int in a browser I will copy the address and I will open in my browser open a new browser just taking time to open It's taking time. Oh, just hold it. Let me do. Yes, the browser is open, and let me paste the URL here. And yes, the reports are generated. So it's give me the suit name that is my test suit. That is my test suit and under this it's my tests okay it's giving here uh, my test suit okay it's not give the test name then it's give the test classes which we have executed this is test ng dot reporting test okay and it is getting that two methods were executed out of which one pass and one failed okay pass method is login and the failed one is the logout if you click on logout it will give you a detailed report if you click on the login it will show you this that it is green that it is passed okay so this test ng has generated reports but these are not so good reports these are not so effective there is no charts etc they are not fancy reports so for generating of fancy reports we need to have ant that is we can generate fancy reports with the help of ant now what is an ant let's search Apache 
Apache Ant. Okay. What is this? Pure Java build tool, simple and easier to GNU make. Actually, this Ant Apache Ant introduced this tool to build our systems in Eclipse in Java. Okay, like what the test ng is doing. Test ng is communicating with different type of Java files and giving fetching us the report. Similarly, test ant, this ant is used in a broader level for building the systems. Okay, so for generating the fancy report, we need to first download this ant. So go to the Google and type Apache and download. Click on this Apache and welcome screen, and under this, you will find. Mm -hmm. Sorry, click on this first link. Yeah, this is the link. Yeah, under this, you will find if you want to zip it or archive, you download. Just click on this bin.zip your download will start I have already downloaded it with me okay and I have saved under this Apache Ant okay so you just extract it okay extract it and you will get something like this so maybe when you are performing you may be getting some updated version but currently so it will be something like Apache and two point or whatever okay so this is how we can configure and now we need to set the environmental variables for this end for this go to start right click on my computer and go to properties under properties you will find this advanced system settings click on this and click on environmental variables here you need to set the end path okay so for this go to um, this sorry yeah go to path and just a second guys if uh, yeah so go and go to under this bin and copy this path okay copy this path and under your this path go to the end click semicolon and paste this path and click on this save button so I have already done this so I won't be doing this but you need to do in your system also don't try to manipulate any of the data here just go to the end type semicolon in this because this is a very sensitive data if something is changed or manipulated it might hamper your computer settings okay so click on ok and just save it I have already done so I am just cancelling it okay so now ant is configured in your system go to your command prompt and type ant okay it's saying build file does not exist if you write n dot version it has giving me the version of the ant installed on my system okay so if you have not configured the environmental variables it would have given something that ant is not a recognized word okay but after configuring it's giving if you check the version it will give the version 
and if you try to execute ant it will give an error that build file dot xml does not exist like test ng only understands the xml file test ng dot xml file similarly ant only understand this build dot xml file okay so you need to include this build dot xml file like you have included the test ng dot xml i have this with me i was just sharing with you also and you just paste under your project copy files okay also guys don't try to understand sorry this don't try to understand what all is written here in this file okay just only keep in mind what i will be telling you except that don't try to you can't un, uh, work on it but in the starting phase just ignore it because it's not it's on linux uh, unix based commands uh, so you must not be knowing but what i'm telling you just remember those these are the properties which we need to set in build.xml because our ant only understand this big dot xml so first is your home path set is set it as a base dir that is learning test ng that is set your home path as the project path second is jars jar is a place where all your jar files are there okay for our case i have downloaded or i have kept all my jar files under d drive jar like all the selenium jar files i do have and the ant test ng jar file the ant ant is not needed it is configured but all this i have kept my selenium jar files here okay also we need to download two more jar files if we want to develop flashy reports or good reports with the help of ant those are section jar and the section license jar just type in the google download section jar and download section license jar you can easy down download it from the internet and i will be also sharing these two jar files with you okay so include those two jar files also in your jar folder next i need to give the description build that is after our compiling where all my code will be written that is we know that there is a java file but when we execute this or compile it it is converted into grouping test dot class file so this will be my structure that is home that is under test learning okay there will be a new folder called build okay like test output there is one more folder build and under this all will be your files will be present similarly where my input files or the source files are that is under test dot source that is my project path and under that source my project path and under this source under this source all my files would be present which needs to be executed okay and ng dot result mean that in which folder i want my results to be available that is under the project path and test dot output under this folder i will be getting my output okay uh so how actually these are implemented is first is a target name set class path then we have init and uh, then is clean okay clean will clean it compile will compile it okay so by the ant we can in it and clean it build it we can run it so just don't go much in detail just understand what i have told you okay and this is for generating the report 
the two files which I have asked you to download that is section and section license which I will be sharing also ok so this much and also we need to specify our test ng you see here we have mentioned the two files which I have asked you to download that is section and section license which I will be sharing also ok so this much and also we need to specify our test ng you see here we have mentioned here the test go to this folder and also execute all the tests which are written in this test ng xml so this ant will be reading this test ng xml ok so with the help of build.xml we can generate our fancy reports before we were executing this test ng.xml now we will be executing this build.xml ok so build.xml is internally calling this test ng.xml and will be executing the test and it will be generating reports ok so why it was giving error here was because at this path there was not build.xml and only understand this build.xml so first we need to go to this path where our build.xml located I will copy this and first I will go to D drive I will go CD edit paste Oh, sorry. CD the directory I need to enter, not the file path. Okay, that is learning test ng. Okay, if I write and here, then let's see what's doing. It's it has found this build dot xml and it is trying to build. And run will execute this. It has compiled the file. Let's refresh this. Okay. so it has compiled the file and it's saying that if you want to run type ant run if you want to execute the test okay so now there are commands and command that is ant clean what clean will do it will clean your ant workspace okay clean is successful so go to refresh so it is cleaned now type and compile and after compile compiling is successful it's, it is doing and the build is successful if you refresh this you will see here what we have done that after the compilation all our files will be under this build location so if you check if you refresh this you see a new folder is created build if you go under this you will find that all the class files are generated for the source files ok so it has done it now if I want to execute the test for which there is a command and run run will execute the test click on enter it is running build is successful and you can see oh, these are the warnings In, ignore the warnings it may be some version error but it has executed the test one test case is passed and the another is failed it's the same ok which for executing that is reporting tests ok that one will pass and another would fail so now the reports would have been generated under this test output let's refresh our folder this is a test output and index.html let's copy the path and again open it chrome this xml oops it has not it's the same report which we were getting before Mm -hmm. just a second guys 
let me run again and run okay and Just a second, guys. Uh, uh, let I need to check why it's not generated. Yeah. So, actually, what we were doing here is that we write that and clean. So, clean was doing actually the cleaning, and we have told here that what the clean will do we have told what the compile will do what the build will do and what the run will do run will run the test and it will run all the test ng test okay so uh, it's correct till now what we have done we have run the test and the tests are executed and tests are executed uh, test ng tests are executed and we are generating a test ng report but a made point is here that we need to generate the fancy reports for fancy reports I have told we have entered an a, another target that is generate reports this generate reports for which we have downloaded also to jar files section and section license will help us to generate these fancy reports okay so uh, also uh, we after downloading these two jar files and typing or copy pasting this target in end file we need to add one more file that is this file test ng dot x sls file it contains some data which is very which helps to generate the file I will copy it from my before project you don't need to type or prepare this file you just need to copy paste this file you don't know need to know how the working it is okay for now you just copy paste this file okay and after this we need to generate the reports like we have run the reports we need to generate the report that is and generate reports okay and it will generate the and reports generate reports and click or enter you see here what is done after clicking of add generate reports it has go to build.xml file for reading it and then it is checking this file which you have copied test ng.xml ok and it has generated the files now let's refresh it you see here new folder has come that is xslt reports these were our test ng reports and now these are our xslt reports if you expand here you will get an index.xml similarly you have which you have for the test ng copy this and open in a browser you see here the reports which we have here are such good reports it clearly shows that half of a test case failed and half of a test case passed yes we executed two tests in which one was failing and one passed okay so you can see clearly see the difference between test ng reports and the reports which are generated by ant okay so that's why we used ant for generating of the reports because they are easy to repress I can show this to anyone and any can can understand this in just one a second 
on the another hand there is so much technical information here but in this case it's very easy I can get a chart here I can get the percentage how much time it executed and all those stuff okay so just uh, again I sh I'm just walking you through that how we generated this fancy reports test ng generate the reports but our data of not a very good so we use the help of the ant ant is for building of projects in java it is built by this tool is was built by apache so we download this ant binaries and we set our java inventory bath okay after this we need to copy this build.xml under the project in this project we need to work on these features that is where our build files will be located our source file jar files and then we have some targets which will do perform tasks in end we have also added one target which will generate our XSLT reports that are those fancy reports also we have downloaded two jar files that is section and section license and we have put them those under this build.xml oh sorry d.jar and it will help us for building up fancy reports also we will copy paste this xls file that is test results access file that will help us to build the reports okay so apart from darrowing the end we need to copy paste this testng file and two section files and also one generate target gen generate reports target here after this we go to command prompt go to a project location where this build.xml is located and we write the command and compile and run to run the test then we write the target generate test and it will generate our test ng nice ant reports okay so this is how you can generate the reports I will be adding one more uh, two minutes video to show you that how we can execute our tests with ant on Linux machines or without using our Eclipse okay you see that here what we are doing is we are manually opening this command prompt and typing all the commands okay and then the reports are generated we can automate this also because suppose when we are working on Unix system how we can do it and suppose I want to some exe so that I want to click it it, it once and it will do all the features so I can do this also just open your text file and type all the commands which you are performing on a command prompt so first after opening the command prompt I change my drive to D drive okay then I go to the location of my project that is build all test ng I navigate to my project here I will type here also say the same sign so that you have a good idea first go to D drive then go to the location CD project path that is CD project path after this type and clean or we can also write in one line that is and clean compile run and then generate reports instead of different line all the targets we can use in same line that is first clean compile run and then generate reports okay and 
similarly I can write ant clean compile run and generate reports and I will save this file as a bad file I go to my desktop and I will write learning test ant okay learning ant dot bat inside inverted commas and I will select all files and click on save so you see here a uh, exe file is generated I will also go and delete my this XSLT reports okay so when I click on this uh, and I will also close my command prompt okay so when I click on this bad file it should open command prompt and it should run my tests of test ng and also execute my reports okay to verify those I have deleted the XSLT reports okay so that they can be regenerated now let's see it's working fine or not I just double click on it okay yes it has worked and yeah let's see if the reports are generated I will just refresh it yes the reports are generated let's see if they have work, worked generated correctly or not copy it and if I open it in the browser yes they have generated so this is how you can generate the bat file bat file is very easy because in they can automate your work okay again again you don't need to go to the command problem type all the commands okay so this ad is a very good feature you as you have seen that we don't need to even open our Eclipse to execute our test with the help of ant file we just created this exe bat file okay thank you hello guys in this session we'll be learning a, a very good concept that is listeners so consider a scenario suppose I have five test cases okay and uh, out of which three are failing and two are uh, passing or whatever the scenario is okay I don't know that uh, when they will be running what their status would be okay but I know one thing that if a test case is passed okay I want to perform some action and if a test case fails I want to perform this action so how I can achieve this because if a test case will pass or fail will depend upon the execution time so I don't know in advance will the test case fail or pass so I can uh, or I can say I can perform this activity with the help of listeners okay so let's consider a live example so you can understand better okay let me create a new package that and I will name it as listeners T E N E R S okay under this I will make one test file and I will name it as login test okay I will create one test under it okay and the function public void that is the first test I would say uh, login with email
I will include my test in uh, sorry at the rate test annotation library and under this test I will print uh, yeah let the function come that system out dot print ln the shortcut is control shift and uh, sorry I just type I yeah I have to write first s y s o then control shift and space bar Oh, yeah. So actually, I, I am typing. I don't know verbally what it is. So, uh, so I just did it again. Once I did it again. Okay. So first, you need to type S Y S O, and then you had hit. I uh, have to hit Control and Space Bar, and it will be expanded to System Out dot Println because System dot Out dot Println is used a number of times. So Eclipse has uh, defined a shortcut for it. Okay, it's a very good uh, uh, ID Eclipse. Uh, it has various shortcuts, and you can define your own shortcuts also. Okay, so let's leave. Okay. So under this, I will be typing inside test login with email. Okay. And I will also create an another test that is login via Facebook and inside login test with Facebook. Okay, but I want to fail this test. Okay, so I will use assert assert dot assert equals and I will compare to string that is test string and uh, test string oh this is my keyboard sorry guys test string one definitely these two strings won't be equal and the error will be thrown okay and uh, the test case will fail okay now this is my test ng dot xml and I have given my suit name as my test suit test case name as my test and I have to set the path that is listeners that is my package and under this my file that is login test okay now execute this and check if it's running good or not Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, one is passed and others fail. Okay. So now I want to perform some activity. Okay. Uh, maybe any of this test case. I have I have forcefully failing this test case but in during the execution I don't know that it will be passed or not it depends upon the actual condition okay I am hard coding this condition here string test one but in actual scenario this value will depend upon the software I am testing okay so I don't know that which test case will be passing and which test case will be f failing so to help with this I will create a one more class okay and uh, yes and I will name it as you. I can name it anything, but uh, I can name it as suppose a listeners, listener. Okay. What I need to do, I need to extend this class. Extend with test listener. Yes. Listener adapter adapter extends. Okay, I will import this class. So I need to make a class and it need to be extended by test listener adapter. Now I will if you go under this okay. 
okay no it's not there okay let me show you if I write here public void on test okay let me check uh, what this test listener adapter file is okay Test listener after test ng library. Yeah, I will check the Java docs for it. And you see, a simple i test listener stores all the tests that were run. So it support various functions. That is, on finish, on start, on skip test. Okay, so. I will be using these functions that is on test success invoke each time a test success so whenever if a test case is passed this function will be called on test start invoke each time before a test will be invoked so like here we have a many functions which can be used these and hence these will help us in our scenario so what I will do I need the test will be executed whenever a test is passed that is on test success so I will use this function okay and I will import this file and I will print here that whenever a test is passed I will print test case passes test case pass and suppose if a test case is failed I want to do some perform some another activity let's say I want uh, so for failing on test failure this is my function that is invoked every time when the test case fails and I want to print test case fail okay so I can use these functions on finish on start according to my needs okay so uh, in my listener class I have used two functions that will be called from this test engine adapter and I have overloaded them with some activity which I need to be performed right whenever a test case pass this will be printed at the end and whenever a test case fail this will be printed okay so now this test listeners to be used I can use it with ng I need to modify my test ng XML also okay here I need to write listeners okay under listener I have to tell the listener path about my listener L I S T E and under the listeners I can we have various listeners so I'm telling which listener it is okay I have to give its class name class name will be my package that is L I S T E N E R S listener dot listener okay and close it let me correct my identification as well uh, it's giving me an error so to what I'm missing This comes from the test. What is listeners? L I S T E. Listener mm. class name. Still listener dot listeners. Yeah. So at last I found the solution. 
and uh, I nearly wasted 30 minutes of mine to just identify so these type of issues can be uh, you can also face and uh, when I tell you the mistake I have done uh, you must be laughing that uh, the spelling here was this okay so that's why I was not able to identify it I was searching what this error means and the null pointer expression in the code the, because this was not throwing the error okay so actually it's listeners I have written it's listeners so these are the silly mi mistakes which uh, eat a lot of your time okay <laughs> so, <coughs> so really I'm just frustrated now a lot of time of mine is wasted <laughs> for the silly mistakes but it happens okay so uh, let me right click on it and run this as test and see suit then yeah one test case is passed and another is fail as we expected but if you see here in the logs file inside test login email then test case pass then the another test case if it get failed we are getting test case failed okay so it's working correctly when this case, test case was passed this function was called and when this was failed the fail function was called now suppose if I comment this so this test case will also pass so in both of the cases this function needs to be executed let's see if it's working fine or not run this as test ng suit and if you check here both of the test cases passes and in both the cases test case pass has been printed so this is dynamic depending upon the test case passing and failing these functions are executed ok so you can see that we can also put these type of stuff in uh, after so after suit after test or after method but if you as I told before these are the smart ones they will identify for test cases failing or passing then they will be executed while if we put an after method it will be executed every time that is after executing any method or test okay so okay that's all uh, in the listeners we uh, we uh, I think that's all uh, in the listeners we can g use many functions and go to large extent also in for the listening listeners but I think that's the basic and it's uh, you can uh, it's basic because this is a more basic concept for the listeners okay thank you hello friends in this session we'll be learning a very good topic uh, when we're developing a selenium framework that is selenium grid and test ng parallel execution normally uh, let me give you some brief about selenium grid selenium grid is a jar file which helps you to execute parallel test case execution now what we mean by parallel test execution let's suppose you have five test cases for your project and you can execute them very well but now there are cases that there are thousand test cases as we know the automation is all about for regression testing so that we can minimize that regression testing effort okay now to execute those test cases it takes about two days okay and now I want those test cases to be executed over a night okay the best possible solution would be that you can start execute those test cases on two different PCs okay so the time for the overall execution will be reduced <coughs> sorry for the bad throat now now there are suppose uh, so uh, if you want those thousand test cases to be executed overnight you will be needing four PCs okay so you execute those test cases on four PCs in the morning you collect report from all those four PCs and you integrate the report and you provide it now 
the problem comes it that whenever you need to execute the suit you have to go to four to five pcs or if your test cases are higher you have to go other species and it's a very tedious task to identify if these tests will be executed on this pc these test case on this pp and and the later on you need to integrate it now the selenium provides a very good way that is selenium grid what selenium grid does is selenium grid allows test cases to be executed parallelly on different file operating system and browser versions okay now there are two things okay if i go to in detail normally people go confuse okay one is test ng one is test ng parallel execution okay what it does it executes tests parallelly the another is selenium grid allows test to be executed on different os and browsers <coughs> okay so there are two concepts one is test ng parallel execution with the help of this you can execute multiple test cases and what the selenium grid does it execute those parallel test cases to be executed on different os and browsers okay so for the time being uh, if you're not understand it doesn't understand uh, it doesn't matter actually because in the later on when i will be going in detail through each of these topic then it will be more clear today we'll be learning about this test ng parallel execution what basically it is okay now to for understanding it let's make a project okay we'll make a project that is selenium uh, or let's i will just name it selenium project and i will create a new package inside it i will name it as my package okay and uh, under this i will create one class file and just a second guys yeah and i will name it as uh test uh, website i will include my selenium jar files okay these are my jar files click on okay and i in the this i will make two tests one public wide test one I will import my test ng library and the annotation as well at the rate test and the second test would be the same that is public wide test two now <coughs> sorry <coughs> so now i want to execute these two test now to work with selenium web driver we need an instance of selenium so i will make a new class which will have the selenium initialization web driver initialization and i will name it as base class i can initiate uh, or declare it here also but it's good a practice to make a separate class and you keep extending this class so i will write here 
this class extends test Uh, sorry, base class. Let me increase the font size also, guys. Mm, editors, text editors, and I just forgot where it was. Uh, colors and font, sorry. Uh, like let me check yeah basic and the text font and like it make it 14 and that is fine yeah okay now it's visible so in that base class what I will do I will create the at the rate before method as we know that this before method will be called before any test is executed okay so I will write before method and public void before method would be my name in this I will do I will before okay import and here will I create an instance of web driver okay I will write web driver driver and here I will write driver is equals to new Firefox driver okay and I will import my web driver class and here I will maximize my window driver dot manage dot window dot maximize and I will apps give an implicit weight that is driver dot manage dot timeouts that implicit weight and I will give a wait for 10 seconds and the unit would be seconds okay so that's perfectly fine so whenever a test will be executed inside this test this driver will be called okay and it will create a new Firefox driver and it will maximize the window and give an implicit weight also whenever a test is executed I want to close my driver object okay I will like public wide after method and I will write driver dot quit so this will kill my driver object now let's create a test case also you will be knowing there is a reason because I am doing this okay and this guy selenium uh, this uh, test ng parallel execution is very tricky one I will try to or I will teach in such a way so that you understand on internet you will find your various uh, blogs and descriptions and it will confuse you okay so in this I will be selecting a website that is w3 schools okay so let me go here driver dot get driver sorry D R I V E R driver dot get and this would be my website okay in this website <coughs> sorry I want to click on learn CSS so let me get the X path of it Okay, and I will click on it. That is driver dot find element by xpath, and I will click on it. <coughs> Sorry, 
<coughs> battery guys okay now after clicking on this learn CSS I want to click on this next chapter or let's say I want to again click on this HTML so I will get the X path of it and I will click it again okay and I will click on it now in every operation let's say I want to um, add a five minutes in explicit weight I want that in um, between these operations it is mandatory to wait for five seconds so I will give explicit weight that is thread dot sleep okay and after every operation I am giving an explicit five seconds wait and it will throw an exception similarly I will copy the same test case in another this because I don't want to waste time okay in another typing it again another test case now these are my two test cases before every test the driver will be declared okay and implicit weight would be added then it will perform some action and then after test will be executed in which driver is killed again next test is called and before test case is executed and the after test now <coughs> and uh, let me add an XML file also testng.xml file so Test in G dot XML. Just a second, guys. Okay. And this XML is created. Now, in this XML, I will like, write the code. Okay. I'll give suit okay and the suit name would be uh, let's say smoke test smoke suit okay and under this I will make a new test and the name would I will give it as parallel tests okay and under this test I will include the class file okay I will name it as classes and under this there would be one class okay and the class parallel tests okay and under this test I will include the class file okay I will name it as classes and under this there would be one class okay and the class name would be this my package my package this and under this test website test website okay and no need of this mm -hmm. I can give this here as well and yes and I'm missing the suit here okay and it's perfect 
so this is my test ng xml file whose the suit name is smoke test test name is parallel test and in this i have include one in class file that is my package test website we'll close this firefox and let's execute this run this as a test ng test okay the execution started it's waiting for the firefox to be open okay the firefox open it maximize the window navigate to the website it will wait for 5 seconds and then it will click on learn css and then it would wait after the page load it will wait for another 5 seconds and, and then it will click on html here the above here okay now explicit 5 second waits and then it would click so our first test case is executed and it will close the browser and then the another test case would be open this test case executed now this test case will be executed it will be executing it will open again open the web driver object create a new web driver object okay let's see yes it again open the firefox okay and it will wait for 5 seconds and it will again click on learn css okay so both of them ran very well serially now see two tests run now and this is our report now suppose if you have multiple test cases so we want to them execute parallelly so test ng provides a very good way here at the suit okay we can give if we want to execute our test case parallelly so there is a parameter that is parallel and i can give i want to execute these two of my methods parallelly okay so in test ng i will tell that i want to execute my methods parallelly and thread count equal to 2 what this thread count means this tells the methods needs to be execute parallelly plus how many parallel instance i want i want two parallel instance that is i want two threads okay let's save this and execute it again uh, run as test ng test okay now these two test cases will be executed parallelly that is one firefox is opened okay that is perfect and the another firefox is also opened now both of these test cases would be executed parallelly okay see but a first test case is stopped while the second test case is executing perfectly let's see and the second test case is completed and it say out of these two test case one test case is passed while the one is failed the this one there is a reason 
now first of all what we tried was that execute both the test case parallelly it was a totally successful we opened the two Firefox however the one of the test case didn't execute successfully there is a reason the reason is mm, yes there was a let yes because this was your test one okay and this was your test two no what the test ng does it uses the thread for each of the one that is thread one and for it it is thread two so it has given thread one to this t1 okay and test two to this thread two now this has the thread one and this has the thread two now first of this test case was start executing okay so it executed created a driver object now it halts and the another parallel test open it again open this website and it uses its driver this driver okay and it start execution it clicked on the next page when the this test case was revived the driver object has moved forward okay so it cannot identify the test so that is why the first test case was not executed it can be any of the case the second is not executed or whatever I re again repeat myself in what this test ng does it creates the thread that is we have told how many parallel execution needs to be done I have said here that two test case to be executed parallelly okay so what it does it picked first thread and the second thread these two method as they are sharing the common driver okay so first of all it opens the Firefox we know the concept of the threads then it holds this test and this test revives it uses this driver the same driver and it clicked opens the website and it holds for a sec some second now when this page comes again this test case one is executed the driver object has moved forward to the next page so it cannot find the driver object here so that's the reason we give error the main problem is this driver object because it will be shared among multiple threads so when we are developing a framework this is the common scenario some says that you can put a static method and the problem would be resolved no static by static method what does the static mean static means that it would be shared commonly to all the threads okay but what we want in our case we want in our case this driver object okay in our case this driver object is shared by this thread as well as this thread what we want is we want one driver which is specifically for this and one driver which is specifically for thread 2 we can do this with the help of thread local objects guys be very attentive in this and I don't think anyone would be teaching you this in the selenium course if you have taken it from elsewhere okay this is the framework points okay you normally get this uh, what is this thread local with a lot of experience if you have an industry okay so to help out this we use thread local object what thread lo local object is any variable which I have defined a thread local it contents will be specifically to its thread okay if I make this driver object as thread local so any thread which is executing this driver with 
have its copy and any driver which will be having access would be having its copy and both the driver cannot interact with each of them okay suppose at any instance suppose that 5 to 10 minutes thread 1 asks for the driver object so it will be given its copy of the thread not the driver thread 2 object copy okay then how it is done it is smartly done by the java itself you don't need to uh, understand that how it is being done okay we just only need to know that using thread local every thread will have it each copy so in that case this driver object this driver won't be shared among multiple test cases okay now let's do how we can make this I will write public static and I will give a thread local here thread local web driver okay is equals to new dear thread local now what I have done here is I have made this driver object this driver object a thread local that is each thread would be having its own driver okay whenever that thread will be executed its corresponding driver will be used okay and the driver object among multiple threads cannot be shared okay that is thread 2 won't have the visibility of driver of the thread 1 okay now in this or uh, what I will do I will mm, this was in the before method I will use web driver driver now I want an object of Firefox driver okay just a second guys uh, it will be more clear I will making a new class so it becomes easy for you as well to understand okay uh, and I will name it as uh, web driver that's a factory because it will be creating a web driver object okay and under this I will make a static method that is web driver whose return is type is web driver and the method name is create and it accepts string type I'm doing this only to make an object for the web drive Firefox driver I'm making it generic I could have written it here also open Firefox driver something but I want to make it generally so that you can use it in your framework okay and here I will use an object for web driver driver just a second guys it would be clear in a minute switch and I will use this type okay and I will give here if it's case Firefox okay then driver is equals to new Firefox driver and case I will give here if it's case Firefox okay then driver is equals to new Firefox driver and case chrome 
driver is equals to new Chrome driver and okay and after this I will return driver What's giving an error? Slice variable driver. Okay, because here there will be a default. Mm. Okay. In the default case, I would throw new legal mm, exception. Why, why, why? Just a second, guys. Uh, create driver string type web driver driver. Oh, okay. Now, what we have done, I have created a class. Okay, in this class, whatever string I will add. If I give Firefox here, then it will give me a Firefox object here. If I give ob Chrome here, it will give me a Chrome driver object. Okay. Now, in my base class, I will call this class. I will write web driver factory dot create. Okay. And suppose I want to work with Firefox. So what I can do, I can simply have written this also for Firefox uh, driver, but I want to be more generic so that in future you can guys use it in your project. Okay, and it's giving us a error at throws. Okay, and uh, now after created the object of driver I want to set this driver okay so I will because after creating this driver I want to initialize with this driver so just a second guys it will be, may let me make this web driver okay set web driver a function I will create and I will pass this driver this I will add later on okay and let me create a new function that is public void set web driver it will take a web driver object okay and we will set this web driver in this local thread variable driver this is a local web driver so what we have done in before every test case we have one created a thread local variable driver okay and a local driver in every thread this driver will take this driver and set it so i will use driver dot set driver so it will set the driver Similarly, I can get the driver as well. I can write a function that is public uh, web driver. Okay, uh, web driver get web driver, and what it will give? It will be driver dot get. Okay. After method is it is using now this driver does not exit, so I need to close this driver. 
okay for getting this driver what we I need to do I will write driver dot get uh, get driver okay and that is I will use this function to get the driver object it give me a driver object so I will use driver dot quit and the function and I will also set driver dot set value null. Now it is prepared. Let me again go through it. Now I have previously told that using the thread local we will create the driver local copy or we can say thread specific drivers. So whenever the thread is called that specific driver will be used. Okay. So we have created an object for driver here that is thread local and then we have created a driver whatever we pass by Firefox or Chrome its corresponding driver will be activated now what we are saying we are saying that this thread local variable set it as a web driver okay so we have set it web driver whenever we want to use the driver object we have made a function get web driver to get the driver object web driver object okay so this is the driver we have created and we have added references you can say in this thread local copy we are saying that this is a thread local variable which will be working for web driver this is not a web driver object basically it's a thread local object which will having a type as web driver so we are initializing this thread local variable with its type that is driver and whenever we want to get its copy we use this driver object and we saying get the value and what it will get it will get the copy of this driver okay so in our website here in a test case also instead of driver to get the value of driver we have to use get web driver when we use get web driver it will give a copy of driver object I think that is not that is pretty clear now if it's not clear please watch this video again it I know it is tough nobody gets in first go I tried it to tell you simply as simply I could and it's a very important concept and if you just shoot this concept in your drive uh, in your interviews definitely the interviewer must be impressed by you <laughs> and these are the framework level things guys these are very much uh, helpful when you're developing a framework when you are going with the experience of two three years no one will uh, will be asking you these questions but when you go for the framework seven eight to ten years experience so definitely the interview will ask how you maintain your driver object when someone says that he has worked on uh, framework just ask him that how you are maintaining your driver copy then he will be confused then you can know that he has actually worked in the framework part or not okay now now let's execute these two test cases run as test ng oops it has given me an error my package create web driver factory 21 default what the what the mistake I'm doing guys web driver Firefox okay it's was this guys <laughs> now run it again okay oh I have commented a driver <laughs> expand uh, that okay so they won't get maximized so uh, let it be or let me you do this because 
I have to give some implicit weight also at least the test case would fit so here now this driver won't work because we don't have this driver copy so instead we have to use get web driver here to get the web driver object okay and your driver object function let's save this and run it again okay the Firefox is launched that is the first thread is executing correctly and this is the another test case and you see both of them are working it's not that it has stopped because each thread has its driver object driver is not being shared among both of the uh, threads and you can see both of them executing pretty well let me small this also so see both of them are working perfectly fine it's waiting for five seconds both of the test case are being executed parallelly guys see and yes first test case is executed successfully and see now both of the test cases passes so this is how you can resolve it using a thread local variable okay now let me give you another example what is this thread count I have told you how many threads we can execute parallelly suppose I have these three tests okay so this th thread tells that at the instance only two tests can be executed parallelly I can mean it three four any time but I have restricted it only for two so how this three test case will be executed first it will execute two test as soon as any of the threads become free it will start executing this test let's run this okay the first test starts executing and this is the second test you see only two browsers are open her test case is not being executed I will minimize this two test cases are executing the first test case close now the third test case will start executing it will open a new Firefox and the test case will start yes the browser is open and now it's executing a third test let me stop so not let's wait time uh, oh. so in <laughs> waste time sorry guys now if I do a 3 here thread count 3 now let's see what happens I'll close this and I will run this as test ng suit okay the first browser open the second test open that is two threads have been used and the third browser will be open that is simultaneously it is executing three tests because we have tell told that three threads can be opened simultaneously and we have used thread local so each 
thread will have its driver it won't be shared with other threads and these three tests will pass successfully let's see them let's them to be executed okay the one test case pass the second test case is passed this is the third test case okay and three of the test cases passed successfully so this is the meaning of test ng parallel execution and uh, try to get it very well you won't find this resource anywhere so much deeply explained and it's a very best interview question okay thank you yeah so we have seen that how the parallel execution takes place let's go in more detail in this okay uh, this was uh, let make a new package okay new package and name it tests and i will keep all my test under this this test website okay now let me create an another test file okay i will copy paste it and i will make it as a test uh, uh, home just a random name not resembling with the test cases it have okay so in this what I will do I will just navigate to uh, just a second I will just navigate to W3 schools I will um, not red if red if have some pop-ups so just navigate to google.com and wait for 10 seconds five seconds let's say okay and sleep and five seconds okay and it has only one test case okay and if I want to execute under this I would have to include my this class file also which needs to be executed I will name it as class name that is the package name that is tests dot uh, test home page okay and also I will update the package name because I have made a new package for the test and I will save this so and now let's execute this and check if the methods functionality will work for both of these files or not okay so we have total four tests and three threads okay so three browsers would be open for corresponding three tests then whenever the first thread completes it will open the fourth browser and will execute this test let's see mm, I run this as test ng test okay the first browser opened the second browser open okay and w3 school it's navigating to Those three browsers are open
and in all three of them W3 scores is being opened So when one thread is completed, so it will now execute the four test case in which it will navigate to google.com. Okay. So it's executing the four test case and in this it will go to google.com. Yes, it is. So that's working perfectly fine. So what we have done, we have tell that all the methods, okay, will be executed parallelly. So whatever methods which were present under this were executed parallelly okay, in the meanwhile test case pass. So there is another method or other styles also by which parallelism can be achieved. Suppose I want both of these classes to be executed parallelly not the test under this should be executed parallelly but the classes that this class should be executed parallel this class should be executed parallel but all the test which is present under this will be executed serially so instead of class methods here i can write classes that is now the parallelism will be achieved on the basis of classes not the methods thread count would be two that is the maximum only only two classes are there so maximum two thread count will work let's see run this as test ng test and let's see how it works okay so first browser is opened okay which is corresponding to the first class file okay and this so in this google is open that is the second class file and in in this browser all the test case for the first class file will be executed that is browser class 1 class 2 okay let's see so there are two threads for corresponding class so this is closed now so there is only one thread will will execute all the test case for this class okay so only one thread will open so all the test case of the class one will go serially now one test case is executed then the another test case will be executed and then the third because this class will be executed in one thread only there is no multiple threads in this Parallel is achieved on the basis of class basis, not on the method basis. So this is how it works. Let's see, let it get executed. So you have also the clear understanding that it works. I'm just showing you because sometimes uh, I got the reviews that uh, I'm not teaching the whole well. Because when sometimes I say that uh, download this file so someone has given me reviews that yeah, i am not teaching how to download a file also so that's the reason i am showing you that it is working okay so it has worked well oh i think there is one test case is remaining yes so the test third test case is start executing okay in the meanwhile let's say so this is the second style one was the method another is the classes and the another style could be on the basis of these test okay suppose i make two test file okay test parallel one test parallel two now in this in the meanwhile it passed okay and this 
so instead of class i have given here that two test cases should be executed parallelly that these test cases should be executed on the basis of not class but these tests so these are test 1 and these are test 2 so parallelism will be achieved on the basis of tests okay two threads for two tests and it when i run this it will work similar way as it work with the classes because in each tests name i have given only classes so this is how we can control the parallelism no practical example how to use it with the selenium grid i will be covering in the later sessions okay so selenium grid uses this parallel concept only selenium grid what it does it helps the test kits to be executed on multi on this using this parallel we have in opened several threads okay test cases are executing parallelly but what selenium grid does it what it does it it lets test case to be executed on different pcs and browsers at the same time okay so we will use selenium grid to test on different pcs and parallel so that those test cases are also executed parallelly okay that is 1 plus 1 offer selenium grid will help on different pc and parallelism will help on different pc is also going in parallel that is more fast and then more fast so this is how the test ng concept work okay thank you guys hello friends in the previous session we have learned about the test ng parallel execution now here we'll be studying in another way or another method or how to execute the parallelism and by test ng only okay so for this uh, well, let's make a new uh, new project okay uh, new java project and selenium project second under this a new package okay my package okay and under this i will create a test file let's say test parallel okay and let me open my firefox also I will include my selenium jar files. Okay. These all Okay, I will make an object for, uh, make a test first. Okay. public void test 01 the first test and i will make an object for web driver driver is equals to new firefox driver and let me open that so i just copy paste the course so i'm not repeating it again and this implicit wait and the maximize window instead of this function i will be using driver driver okay and i will import my web driver library and my test ng annotation okay and in this test method so what i will do i will open w3 schools only okay and i will write driver dot so 
get okay and then I will what I will do I will mm, yeah I will click on this try it yourself okay dot click find element by x path also I need to give and on this element I would click now next after clicking no, let it be I don't want to now move to another window I want to make it simple so let me click on this search and then I will enter some text okay that would be fine so first I need to click on this search okay I will okay use this only okay I'm not going this it's an absolute part but don't worry for teaching purpose it's perfectly fine and after clicking on it I want to enter some text here its x path is this driver dot find element by x path x path is this and I will send some keys that is test yeah. well, let me see if it's working fine or not run this as a test ng test Okay, Firefox opens. Yes, it to make it W3 schools. It clicked, and yes, it's working perfectly fine. Suppose I want to execute this test for some data so I will use some data parameters okay I have already told this what the data parameters is if you have not gone please go through the video for his test ng annotations okay that is data provider I will write public void the output would be return type would be an object okay and get data write new object okay and the first value would be test one okay the next data provider would be test 2 and suppose I want this test okay yeah okay it's a double dimensional so what the mistake I'm making just return it okay I will instead of actually I have to return this double dimension so I will return this and uh, return new object and this would be its value okay and
so if you have not gone through the art session for data providers please go through it so using the pre data providers we can execute this test suppose i want to execute this test two times with different set of parameters okay so in the first i want test case i want to enter some text let's say test one and in another i want to enter test two so i want do this test two times so instead of copy pasting and write it again using the data providers and mentioning how many tests i want to execute this test case so i have two data so this test case would be executed two times okay so i have to tell this test that i have to use data provider whose name is get data okay and it is accepting one value so i will write string value and instead of hard coding value i will use value a okay so now for the first test case it will take this value and execute the test and for second it will execute the test okay let me copy my test ng xml file in this project also and update it mm. okay smoke test parallel test one and the package name would be my package okay and the class name is test parallel so we and i have put the test should be executed by methods okay we have studied it that all the methods would be executed parallelly now in this test case though let's run this then i will explain of the reason okay run this test test ng test close this window okay so test is being executed so it opens the firefox okay okay and it's working on it it's not opening second let me also use driver dot quit because it driver dot quit okay now let's execute when i have used parallel by methods so we need to check as this method will be executed two times with this type of two data so will it this test will be executed serially or parallelly will test ng recognize this as a single method or two methods if it recognize as a single method then in that case it won't be executed parallelly if it execute as two methods then they would be executed parallelly till now we have seen it's only has open one browser that is not running it parallelly it has closed it then it will open in another browser yes and then it is working that is this parallelly won't work inside this inside one test which is executed by test parameters okay let's close this so to achieve this type of parallelism test ng provides another way it says if you want to execute a single method parallelly for different data providers then here use parallel is equals to true its default value is false so when we set true okay test ng recognize that it can execute these data providers also parallelly now how many parallelism will depend upon this value only how many threads we can go okay if i execute it now remove this parallel okay this parallel won't have any effect now parallel is equals to known okay because this parallel is for the methods 
we have one method only okay so this para parallel won't have any effect inside the data provider we are saying executed parallelly okay now let's see run this as a test ng test and now it should execute both the test parallelly okay the first browser opens and the second browser opens you see both the test cases are being executed parallelly and we also see we will be seeing that they are working fine or not we will check the parameter values they are adding okay okay test to it entered and test one yes they executed successfully okay what i do if i added one another another data provider test 3 let's see then here the parallelism is only 2 the number of threads 2 then let's see that this parallelism also takes the thread value from it or not run this as test ng test okay the browser opens the other browser opens two threads are open we have to see if the third thread is being opened or not yes it is open okay actually i have never tried this myself yeah so in test ng there is an another value it doesn't depend upon this thread count uh, here there is also we have to give a separate thread count i just forgot the annotation so here also we have to provide its thread okay how many threads you want to execute okay so anyhow the main concept was the showing the parallelism that how we can achieve the parallelism for different data providers because suppose we have a data driven framework on which a specific test case needs to be executed 100 times okay so we want those 100 test cases to be executed parallelly then in that case this type of parallel is equals to true will help us okay so that's all for this session thank you guys